Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Lives official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Rachel obtained Brady's arrest. Whitley thwarted Lenny's attempt to save Abe. EJ and Stefan reached an agreement. Kristen extorted Dimitri. Sand and Chloe had a wedding anniversary. Trask and Lai became friends on a blind date. Alex irritated Chad. Bunny deceived Maggie. Johnny informed Rafe of Nicole's pregnancy. Tripp and Wendy were interrupted by Lai. Sloan's pregnancy test resulted in a positive result. Jerry revealed the truth about Abe to Steve. Lani's body was discovered on the docks by a U.S. marshal. While Steve was beating on Jerry's apartment door and shouting fervent greetings, John arrived. Steve stepped back to allow John to kick through the door, but Jerry was no longer there, having presumably fled through an open window. Steve called Jada, who promised to alert public transportation officials to Jerry's whereabouts, and after the discussion ended, John saw an error message on a beeping printer, leading to the discovery of a partially printed bus timetable that had been lodged in the machine. Kayla approached Whitley at the hospital, wondering what was going on. I couldn't help but overhear that you feel like you're up against a brick wall, Kayla explained, eliciting an uneasy laugh from Whitley. Whitley said that Kayla had simply overheard the thoughts of someone who was about to depart from their job, all because of Abe. After hearing more of the story, Kayla summarized, making Whitley even more uncomfortable. Whitley protested to Kayla's too simplistic evaluation of the problem, then rushed out without even completing the appropriate papers to make the resignation official or waiting for a final paycheck to be generated. Rafe arrived at the Price Condominium to pick up Lani, which made Paulina apprehensive. I'm not the commissioner anymore, but I did volunteer to oversee the transfer. I just thought it'd be easier for her to deal with someone she knows, Rafe stated. The thing is, you're here, and she's not, Paulina acknowledged. That's not good. I mean, there's not much time for me to get her back before her fellow expires, Rafe said. Maybe you should call her, Paulina said. She's a prisoner. She's not allowed to have a phone, Rafe informed Paulina. She just wanted to sit in the park alone and pull herself together after the funeral, Paulina explained to Rafe. Rafe followed Paulina to Lani's last known location, but no one was there. She can't be late, or she'll jeopardize her chances of getting an early release, Rafe observed. Paulina blamed Rafe for the predicament, claiming that if the police had found Abe, Lani would not have been given a furlough in the first place, and the rant resulted in a panic attack. Rafe hurried Paulina to the hospital. Paulina ultimately calmed down and apologized to Rafe for her previous outburst. Rafe called someone about the furlough, and told them a fib in order to purchase extra time to look for Lani. Lani was relieved to discover Abe inside the King residence, but Whitley's drug had already taken effect, disrupting the father-daughter reunion. Lani tried to explain the problem, but Abe was no longer awake enough to see that Whitley could not be trusted, and the nurse interrupted the conversation. Lani screamed at Whitley while prepping Abe for transport, but the nurse quickly pounced with a syringe, you're not getting away with this. Lunny managed to snarl at Whitley before fainting and passing out at Abe's feet. When Bell visited the police station and stated that there had been a development in the investigation, Jada was in the process of obtaining a search warrant for the Demera estate. Jada was irritated to find that Kristen would be rewarded for kidnapping a child, and Bell concurred, but felt that part of the detective's annoyance originated from guilt over Rafe's dismissal. Brady drew a gun on Kristen while they were alone in the Dimero Mansion's living room. Since when do you own a gun? Kristen mumbled. It's my father's, and it's loaded, Brady said. Brady pushed Kristen up against a desk and demanded to know where Rachel was. Kristen reached for a vase while stating Rachel was in the secret tunnels, but Brady slammed the vase away. Brady shoved the gun's barrel into Kristen's stomach and threatened to pull the trigger unless Rachel's true hiding place was revealed immediately. Rachel stormed into the living room at that moment, telling Brady to stay away from Kristen. You were gonna kill Mommy. 
As Brady hid the gun, Rachel snapped. I would never do that. I just needed her to tell me where you were, Brady told Rachel. Brady told Rachel to wait in the foyer before continuing to lash out at Kristen. The only thing you had left was that I hadn't told our little girl what kind of woman you are. But that's over now. She'll know everything now. Brady issued a warning, forcing Rachel to return and defend Kristen once more. I don't want to go. I want to stay here with Mommy. Rachel yelled at Brady as she was dragged away from Kristen and out of the mansion. Kristen gathered the remnants of the custody agreement and taped them together before summoning Belle to the mansion and pleading for her assistance in convincing Brady to sign the document, but the lawyer refused after learning what had happened. Brady went over to the Evans Black townhouse with Rachel, banishing the youngster to a bedroom and returning the gun to its hiding place, and Jada arrived shortly after, having heard what had happened at the Dimmera home. She kidnaps our daughter and then calls the cops on me. Brady sputtered at Jada, just as Rachel walked back into the living room. I called the police, not mommy. Rachel shrieked at Brady as she dashed to Jada's side. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.